Hey everyone, Brad here from MacSales.com. Today we're going to replace the main hard drive in the 21 and a half inch iMac mid-2017 models. These instructions will cover both the standard and 4K models as both models are nearly identical inside. There's a number of reasons why you may want to replace your machine's current hard drive. Your original hard drive may have failed and replacement is necessary. Or you may wish to simply upgrade your original factory hard drive to one with a higher capacity, better performance, or both. Replacing the drive in these iMacs is an advanced installation and there is a risk of damage to your screen. If you're unsure about completing this installation yourself, we highly recommend contacting a professional to perform the install for you. Before you begin, here are some tips to make it a little easier. First off, we recommend you watch the video all the way through so you have a clear idea of the process. Next, but just as important, we recommend you make a backup of any existing data. For details on how you can do that, you can check out the knowledge base at MaxSales.com. This job requires a few tools, two suction cups, a screen removal tool, a nylon pry tool, and a Torx T10 screwdriver. A microfiber cloth for cleaning smudges on your screen is also recommended. Make sure you have these all ready beforehand and to protect your computer, make sure you're working on a soft, static-free surface. And if you can, it's a great idea to watch the video on another device so you can follow along step-by-step. Step. Once you're all set, we're ready to follow the instructions with our MaxSales.com experts. After shutting down and unplugging the iMac, the first thing we'll need to do is remove the display. The display on the iMac is held in place with an adhesive around the edges which you'll have to cut apart. This is an extremely tricky process which runs the risk of cracking the display, so you'll need to be very careful. Starting on one of the lower corners, insert the screen removal tool between the glass and the chassis. Take care not to put too much stress on the glass itself or it may crack. Work along all the edges of the iMac, taking care not to push the tool in too deep or pull out too far on the glass. All we're doing is cutting the foam tape holding the display on, not prying the glass away. When near the camera, insert the removal tool only as far as the very edge of the EyeSight camera port so as not to damage the camera itself. The process may take a little time, so be patient. Continue around the iMac until you reach the other side. You may now lay the iMac face up on your work surface and attach the suction cups to the upper corners. Do one last check to make sure you've loosened all the adhesive around the edges of the iMac. Then lift up on the glass using the suction cups. Inside, near the top, you'll need to detach two cables. For the first, simply slide it out of its socket by its tabs. For the second cable, first lift up on the plastic tab to unlock the connector, then slide it out. You can then angle the display the rest of the way up and remove the adhesive holding the bottom of the display in place. Simply grab the tab on each side of the adhesive strip and slowly pull it towards the center until it comes free. Finally, use your opening tool to slit the last little bit of adhesive along the center and you should be able to remove the display and set it aside. To remove the original hard drive, we'll need to detach the retainers held in by these four Torx T10 screws. Once you've removed the retainers, you can lift the drive up from the bay and detach the SATA connector holding it in. The connector can be tight and the cord is short, so it may just be a matter of finding the right angle. You can then set the drive aside. We can install any standard 2.5 inch SATA drive in this bay, either an SSD or platter based drive. For this installation, we're going to install an SSD. We'll need to reuse the rubber bumpers from the original drive on the new one. Simply peel the bumpers off the sides of the original drive.
and place them on the new one. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow them to stick. To reattach the new drive, it may be easier to move this speaker unit out of the way so you have more room to work. Loosen the two Torx T10 screws that holds it in. Then lift the speaker unit up and rotate it to the side slightly to reveal the SATA connector. You should now have enough room to attach the SATA connector to the drive. You can now set the drive itself so it lays flat in the bay. You can then set the speaker unit back into place and tighten the screws down again. Place the drive retainer that goes on the speaker side into place, making sure not to pinch the power cable wire and secure it with the two identical sized screws. Then replace the other retainer. The side near the fan gets the shortest screw, while the remaining screw goes on the power supply side. Next, clean off any remaining adhesive from around the edges of the iMac chassis and from the back of the display. Now we can set the display tape pieces in place according to the diagram that comes with the kit. You'll know their position correctly if all the holes and cutouts line up correctly with the shape of the iMac chassis. Once you've determined all the pieces of tape have been placed correctly, peel off the backing and adhere them to their places on the iMac. You can then peel off the backing on the other side to expose the adhesive that will attach the display. Set the display along the bottom with the edges flush with the lip and as centered as possible. But don't let it close yet as we need to reconnect the video cables. Reattach the lower cable by sliding the connector into its socket and locking it into place with the handle. Then, simply slide the last connector into its socket. You can now carefully lower the display into place, making sure you have the edges lined up correctly. Gently squeeze along the edges to make sure the adhesive sticks. Then use the microfiber cloth to remove any extra fingerprints. Once you clean any remaining marks off your iMac, you're ready to set it back upright, plug it back in, hook it up, and turn it on. Well, we're all done. Now that your iMac is back together, you can reinstall your OS and transfer your data to the new drive. If you need help with that again, check out the knowledge base on our website. For more installation videos and a variety of memory, storage accessories and more, visit MacSales.com.